So I'm going to explain my version of the perfect brow and also show how powerful they are on the face. Brows, surprisingly, will change how wide your nose photographs, also how old or how young you look, and also how lifted or how droopy your eye can be. Here are some facts. However wide your brows are here is how wide your nose can photograph. And I know, as my mum taught me as well, that we were taught to start our brows by imagining a line from the corner of the nose to the corner of the eye and up. Now this kind of could make sense, but if you have a wider nostril or a flared nose, what does that mean? Does it mean you start your eyebrows all the way out here? So I believe is however wide you want the bridge of your nose to look is where your brows should start. As you can see at the moment, her brows are slightly wide set, so what becomes the focus is this part of her nose. When I move her brows in, you'll see that what would become the focus is her bridge. So the rule is, however wide you want your desired bridge width, however wide you want this part of your nose to look, is where your brow should start. Another big myth is the angle of our brows. Again, I've been taught to lift your brows here. This, unfortunately, does not make anyone look younger. It can make you look older. And the reason is that as women age, this part of your brow becomes more predominant. As we get older, our brow bone protrudes and gets fuller. So if you start to lift your brow above that area, you actually make this area more obvious. So in surgical terms, how to make a woman look younger, they actually lift the brow here. So the second you take out this angle and make the brow look more straight, you'll actually make yourself look younger. So just remember, ladies, as we age, the brow drops down here and drops down here. So to make yourself look younger, you want to lift the brow here, lower the arch, and lift out here. And as you can just see, just by me doing that to her, how much her eye looks different. So to do this technique, what I like to use is gel eyeliners or gel brow pencils. Um, the reason for that is you can get beautiful, fine, strand-by-strand strand techniques. And also, once it dries, it's waterproof. So what I do, step one, is comb the brow. And remember, what I want to do here is I want to move her brow in closer to the nose bridge, lower her arch, and have a beautiful finish. Now, some ladies want the whole brow completely sketched out perfectly. I'm going to show you a softer version. So I've mixed up her colour. It's so important to have the colour to match the exact colours of the hairs. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do beautiful, very fine, strand by strand hairs and move her brow closer to her nose bridge. Take your time and do one to two hairs. Stop, sharpen your sword. What I mean by that is have that point on that brush so perfect. And keep these brows in this part going straight up. If you make a mistake, if you make a say a strand that's just too thick or too heavy, get a clean angle brush with foundation and just cut through the strand. Or take it off and start again. Now to define this part of the brow, I'm going to do some strands here. And you can start to see how natural this looks. So all I'm doing here, I'm just going to fill in where there's some gaps. I'm just putting a few hairs where it's needed. To lower the arch, I'm just going to give her a few hairs through here. This is a really great technique if you've got puffy eyelids or hooded eyes. The only downside with using gels, gel eyeliners or gel brow products, is they dry out. So you've got to constantly get more product. But it's worth it in the long run because once it's on, it doesn't move. So here I go straight up vertically. I start to shift and change my angle as I work out. I like to define this part of the brow here and the outer edge. I don't always define here because I think it looks more beautiful when you see these lo lovely soft feathery hairs. And the reason I've designed my brow comb so thin is so it just combs the hair. If you use a thicker brow comb and you like to use a lot of foundation, you can sometimes get teeth marks through your foundation.
Now I'm going to show you how to perfect that perfect end brow point. So in a perfect world, you want your eyebrows to end, corner of the nose, corner of the eye and up. That's a nice place for a brow to stop or shorter. Making them longer can actually age you a little. So this is the best way to do it. If you're great at doing it, sure, get your angle brush, do your stroke, you're done. But if you struggle with the point, what you do is draw the brow, but stop it shorter of where you want it to end. And I'm going to purposely make this a little bit clumpy here to show you how easy it is to turn this into a perfect point. Stop your brow short, I'm going to make it a bit thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a clean angle brush with foundation. Now I'm purposely making this half a shade lighter than her skin just for impact so you can see. This is a great trick. So on a clean angle brush take up your foundation and you want to do a scissor technique. So you're going to come under the end of the brow and you're going to lightly just, it's like an eraser. And what this does, it extends that brow by such a, so minute, you get this beautiful polished edge and it's that easy. And you can see that beautiful sharp point. Sometimes what it might do, it actually can extend the brow a little bit too long, but that's okay because you just use your finger and take off the excess. And that's how you get that beautiful, beautiful point. So now if you compare this shot to the before shot, you'll notice here that a nose bridge looks slightly more narrow. And this is why brows are so important and so essential as part of your makeup. 